एनर्जी Now uh, he is the professor of Virginia University. I will state elaborately about him afterwards. Now I am requesting our uh, secretary, Teachers Council, uh, Dr. Pushpita Sharkar, to introduce. For Thank you, Madam. Thank you. A very good evening to all, and a very very good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, Uh, it is with immense pride i would like to introduce our chief guest speaker professor moon gupta department of electrical and computer engineering university of virginia usa sir we are extremely honored to have you with us this evening uh, it's morning for you in this international webinar organized by bangabashi college the topic Uh, i believe everyone knows solar cell and energy i would like to hand sir we are uh, looking forward to your lecture i think we'll be enriched by your uh, uh, presentation now i would like to hand over the proceedings to dr lopamudra shengupta associate professor department of political science and convener of our uh, seminar committee to speak a few words thank you professor pushpita sharkar good evening good evening respected principal madam dr himadri bhattacharya chakraborty our respected our beloved students i give you a warm welcome and thank all of you for joining today through youtube and to google meet for the seminar on solar cell and solar energy we are very fortunate to have with us very distinguished professor sir dr mulchand agupta uh, he is professor distinguished professor at uh, uh, langley distinguished professor and director for nsfi and usrc and laser center department of electrical and computer engineering university of virginia usa sir we welcome you to our since you are joining us from the other part of the globe a very good morning to you and a warm welcome it's really been a privilege to have you with us in today's webinar uh before we uh go to the inaugural session which has which will be delivered by our principal madam she has given her kind consent to give her inaugural address i as seminar convener uh will focus on the brief principle and objective of today's seminar uh bangobashi college which was in 87 in the colonial period under the aegis of uh, acharya girish chandra bosch who was greatly inspired by ishwar chandra vidyasagar the then and famous uh, social reformer of the renaissance period since then bangobashi college has been striving in all aspects and has excelled in almost all the faculties and departments which have been established uh, in after independence so we have social science humanities and social sciences uh science mus departments and in, and re, in recent years an initiation of post graduate graduation course has also been introduced in the college now the focus of the college since then has always been to encourage education among all sections of the population especially those who are socially and economically challenged it is really a pleasure to see our college growing up and we will be soon having a green campus about which our principal madam wrote on it in her inaugural 
address. But the most striking endeavor of our college in recent days have been to engage our students, not just in academic curriculum, but to create for them an environment of diverse career opportunities by engaging them in various workshops, trainings, and seminars from various sectors of the society, it has guided them to grow interest in various fields and choose their career options according combining both scholarship and practical innovation. We have been uh, publishing an academic journal called the Bongomashi Academic Journal which reflects the writings and research interests of our faculties and all those who are guiding their students for higher research in their PhD. To sum up, it has been our pleasure that we have been able to keep alive our institutional motto of Praniprasneno and Shebayo of reverence, questioning and service. We continue to strive for better by following this holistic and inclusive pattern of education. With this, I end my welcome address and I request Principal Madam Dr. Himadri Chakraborty Bhattacharya to please uh, begin her inaugural address. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lopa Munshi. And I'm introducing, it is our, really it is our great pleasure that he, uh, he is with us, he consented us to deliver this valuable speech. Now, I have to introduce uh, some, a few things about Professor Gupta. Now, Professor Gupta is currently a Langley Distinguished Professor and Founding Director of NSF Industry University Cooperative Research Center for Lasers and Plasmas at University of Virginia. And he was the senior scientist previously at Propulsion Laboratory, California Institute of Technology, California. And he was the postdoctoral fellow at uh, Cornell University, New York. And he, uh, he is the uh, National Research Council Panel Chair for the Development of NASA Materials, Nanomaterials Technology. And so we are very happy that uh, he is, uh, uh, we are with us and join uh, with us. And now I'm requesting Dr. Gupta to deliver his valuable lecture. Thank you so much, Professor and Principal Dr. Chakraborty. And thank you, Dr. Professor Sarkar. And thank you, Professor San Gupta, for the introduction. It is honored to share what I have learned. Just want to make sure you can see my slide. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. So. Yes, we can see. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to talk about solar cells and solar energy. So we look at our condition right now for the where we are in terms of the, the energy. So if we look at the energy, this is the current picture and I will show you what might be in next uh, 30 years. Okay. But this is where we are. We have coal, oil, gas are the major sources of energy and small percentage of solar and wind energy and some nuclear, some hydro. But we are in terms of the energy. So why solar? That's the first question. Okay. If you took a look at the picture on the left, it says global warming, 
a lot of CO2 emission and that has to be decreased to avoid the global warming. A lot of pollution all around the globe that has to be tackled for the human society. And there's always energy crisis. So solar energy is sustainable for a long time. It's clean and easily accessible everywhere around the world, pretty much. So that's why the solar is playing an important role. Solar is part of the renewable energy. So we have solar, we have wind energy, we have geothermal, biofuel. So these are part of the renewable energy and my talk will be focused on the solar part of it. Okay. So why is the solar playing an important role? So if you look at the blue color, light blue color, okay, from 2010 to 2020, the price solar module has been keep decreasing. Okay. And that's an, because economics plays an important role. So the price has decreased now that it can compete with other sources of energy. That was not the case 10, 15 years ago, okay? But that's just where we are. But that doesn't mean that price will not go down even further. Everything else goes up, but the solar could go even further. Gold. So solar becomes economically very viable for people as a source of energy. Okay. Then if you look at the dark blue color bar charts, the solar production has been keep increasing. So if you look at that every year, the total solar module production has been increasing because the price is coming down and it has a very nice feature of providing. So solar is playing an important role and will continue to play an important role. So, if you look at the installed capacity, you know, if you look, this is the looking at the future ahead, 2000, you know, 50, 2005 to 2050. Right now, we are about total capacity, little less than a thousand gigawatt. But look at the future, what looks ahead. The solar capacity will continue to increase even in 2015. So that shows you there is a bright future for this technology. Okay. If you look at the global, okay, so this is the total power installed increase. If you look at the India, 47 gigawatt, Germany, U.S., China, Australia. So it's really, you know, increasing globally. It's not just any one particular region. So in terms of the students or the future career, if the solar is going to grow more, you know, capacity, there will be also a lot more job up. Right now, we have about two, about 4 million jobs in solar. But 2030, it will become 11.7. 2050, 18.7 million jobs. So there is a bright future for the job opportunities for younger people. It's good area to be in. So with that background, let me... Now, first question is, why solar energy? Okay. Economically, I gave you information. But if you look at the energy coming from the solar, in one day, 
the solar can provide 27 times more than the human need for one year. So that is the thing about that it is tremendous amount of energy is available globe. So how does that energy comes to the earth? So the graph shows you the intensity, how much light is coming on the earth. Okay. As a function of the wavelength of the light or different colors. So the light comes from the sun, 8% comes in terms of the ultraviolet light. 39% comes into the visible, our eye can see. 53% comes in the near infrared. So the light energy coming on the earth has a broad spectrum. Okay. And for the human society, the challenge is how to utilize this broad spectrum of the light and convert that light in efficiently into the electric power. Okay. But that's what we are given coming on. Okay. Now, with that challenge, people have been working on the solar in a long time. I mean, actually, the in 1950s, you know, where there were three, four percent efficiency were were demonstrated, but solar can be converted to electric power into different means. One which you are more familiar the solar panels on the rooftop. There you can take a light and convert to electric power. That's called conventional photovoltaic. And theoretically, what is the best you can do in terms of converting light energy into electric energy is about 32%. We will talk why is that, why not be able to utilize all of the light, you know. Why is it 68 wasted? That's not convert to electric power. But that's the best we can do. In this research laboratories around the world, the best laboratory demonstration has been 26.7%. And most commercial solar cells modules you see in rooftop have about 20% efficiency. That means 80% of the light is still not. There are other ways people are looking at converting. Well, why not use light and convert into the, the heat? Heat can be used for heating purposes. Okay. So solar thermal power and that heat can be used for the electricity and convert to electric power and that has efficiency about 25 to 30 percent. Then you can also do is take the heat and convert directly heat to the electric power and that has 10 percent or you can use the waste heat there is a lot of waste heat. We only use part of it and then we discharge that heat. And people are working on converting that waste heat into the recycling it, you know. And that has about 8% efficiency. So, point I want to mention here, there are a lot of challenges for the heat. How to take the sunlight or waste heat and efficiently convert into the electric power. And that has been the goal for researchers, scientists around the world for 70 years or longer, is how do you improve that? Okay. So with that different approaches, I know I have a lot of information, but the point I want is that Around the world, there are different approaches scientists are pursuing how to increase the efficiency, and they are making improvements. 
and you can see from 1975 to 2020, the efficiencies were, you know, around 10 percent, and now the efficiencies are over 40 percent. So human society has made a significant progress, but a progress with understanding, and that takes time. So what is the solar this solar cell which converts light to electric energy? What are they made of? Light to electric power. So if you look on it has to be non-toxic. You do not want to put the toxic on your roof or house. It has to be semiconductor type. It has to be low cost. So there are quite a number of requirements for material to be suitable for solar energy. So silk sand is available you know, around the world. It is non-toxic and can be converted into a silicon, which is a semiconductor material. So they take that SiO2, convert it into silicon, then they purify it, okay. and then they grow single crystal, and then they cut that into thin vapor, and that's what we call a solar cell. So that's the process how a solar cell material is made. So you take, you know, sand, convert into the wafer, then you fabricate that wafer into a solar cell. It's like similar to like semiconductor or microelectronic chips you use in your computer or cell phone. You, they use silicon, same material. It's used for solar cell. And then you make this solar cells, these could be like six inch by six inch in size. And then you take many of the solar cells and connect them and take a module which you see on the rooftop. So those who are science, you know, students, what is really, how does this, this silicon convert sunlight to electric power. So what is done is taking a silicon vapor, it's a semiconductor material, and they make n-type semiconductor, okay. and then they make metal contact, and also when the sunlight falls on your window glass, some of the light get reflected. And that light is lost or wasted. So what the solar cell they do, they put a coating on it and roughen or texture it so the light reflection is minimized. And that allows the most of the sunlight to be captured. Okay. So you have anti-reflection coating, metal contacts, and then you have a back contact, yellow metal contact. So when the sunlight comes in, it creates electron and hole, and those are collected, and that gives you the electricity. So if you look at this diagram, okay, the there are a number of steps which are involved to fabricate a solar cell, similar to like a microchip in your you know, semiconductor electronics, the number of process steps are used to fabricate a solar cell. They take the material, the wafer, they make it, they clean it, they texture it, they remove the top surface, then they dope it, okay, then they passive it and metallization. So the point I'm saying is there are a lot of number of steps are required. So you have, so why is solar cell not so cheap? Sand is very cheap, you know. Why is not solar cells are also very, 
really low cost. You know. Well, as you can see, sand is taken and purified to convert to silicon. So there is a cost involved. Another thing you can see, there is a lot of steps, you know, process steps are required to fabricate a cell. And so that add a cost. The land, the building, people, you know, so that all that adds to that. And that's why the cost, you know, is where it is and is still coming down. So as people learn with the knowledge, they can simplify it, lower the cost. This is what the solar cell looks like. It's about six inch by six inch. What you are seeing, the white lines are the metal, we call them fingers. Okay. So these are where the light between the fingers gets into the silicon, get absorbed. And then these fingers, metal, collect the electron holes and give you the electricity. And then these fingers connect to a bigger metal we call bus bar. And then you make your connection, this uh, bus bar to another wave solar cell. You connect those different solar cells and generate higher power. Okay. They, if, if you look at the solar cell, they are not any color, you know, mostly they are like blue or dark black type color. The reason is because they micro texture the surface of the solar cell so it can efficiently track light. The goal is to collect all of the sunlight you know, and that's why the cells look black you know, because they don't reflect much light. You know. The image here shown the kind of surface those solar cells have. You know because these surfaces have efficiently absorb the light. You know. okay. okay, so I described you how, what is a solar cell. Okay. Then they take solar cell and connect them to make what we call a module or panel. You know. okay. So what is a module? You know. okay. So basically you take cells and connect them together. Why connect them? Because that allows you to increase the current and the voltage. That So total electric power is increased. So you have the solar cell, but then these solar cell have to be put outdoor weather for 25, 30 years. And so you have to protect from the rain, dust, okay and the weather conditions so that these things can continue to operate 30 years of lifetime. That's a long duration. You know, not many things last that you know, lifetime, but solar cells have lifetime of 30 years. So what is done, they put a, a polymer on top of the cells, then they put a glass because that glass and polymer protects from the environment. You know. Similarly, they put a polymer and a glass sheet on the back, you know, and then everything is sandwiched into this metal frame, so it holds the all thing together. So that's what your solar module look like. You know. So you have a cell which are connected, and then they are encapsulated and enclosed in a glass and have a frame. That's what the module looks like. Okay. okay, so around the world, people have been looking at, you know, the efficiency. So the best efficiency in the world today for silicon solar cell is 26.7%. Okay. The module, the Cell is one a small piece, module is a many cells. So when you connect them and the cost plays an important role for commercial, so the modules best are 24%. And then there are different types of solar cells which have a different efficiencies for cell and module 
thin film solar cells, you know, proboscite, organic uh, solar cells. So this chart shows you the where the human society is in terms of the efficiency. Okay. So one of the questions is why not have higher efficiency? Certainly we like to do that. You know. So why? So we said about 32-33% is the theoretical limit. Why is that 33%? So what happened is that when the sunlight comes in, okay, about 18% is get transmitted, is not absorbed by the silicon. So that is 18% loss right there. Okay. So the light from the solar is a multi-wavelength. We have blue, green, red, yellow, different colors. And that light falls on the sulcan. Only part can be utilized because of the multi-wavelength. So that account for 47% loss. And that's why you have remaining 33%. So basically what happened for you know, science students is the light comes in, it gets absorbed by the silicon, it creates a electron from valence band to conduction band, leaves the hole and you create electron hole pair. Okay. Some of it can be transmitted, some may recombine and, and do not produce the electric power. So that just shows you that people understand why the losses are so high. The other one is the inorganic solar cell. There is a big push to really lower the cost even further. And you know the plastics and organic materials could be a low cost option. Second thing is it can provide a flexible solar cell like cloth, curtains. Okay. Those are flexible. Silicon is a brittle material, so if you bend it, it will break. You know? okay. But organics have potential to make you know, flexible solar cells. And so people have been working you know, in organic materials. They were few percent efficiency, and now they have gone over 23% efficiency. So, so human society has made significant progress also in that area. This is just for the reference or for science students more, how does the organic solar cells work? They have organic layer surrounded by multiple layers and light is being absorbed, create electron hole pair, electron is collected on one side, hole is connected on the, collected on the other side and that produces the electric power. Okay, so that is the principle of the cell but then they take these cells and connect them together to make a module. And if you take different module, you connect them, you make a panel. If you take different panels and connect them, you make array. So you can start from, you know, why question might come to mind. Why not just start from the array? Why go through the cell module and panel? Well, the reason is because you have to go through many, many different fabrication process. It's not easy to deal with a large size in a structure. So that's why they start with a cell and then connect them. Okay. Yeah. So you can see here the solar cells are, you know, each is a solar cell, okay, and now these are connected in series. So you can see that by connecting them, many of them, each cell, individual cell produces about 0.7 volt, okay. But by connecting them in different cells, you add voltage. It's just like connecting multiple batteries, you know, okay. 
So you connect them and that way you can make it 12 volt battery or you can make it 110 volt like you need for your um, using your appliances. <laughs> so they you these cells are connected to get current and voltage. So in reality what they do they connect them in parallel or series or combination of series and parallel in order to get the desired voltage and the current. Okay. So the, in solar energy, solar cell is only one part of it. Okay. So we have discussed how to generate electric power from the solar cell, but there are other components in the solar energy. One is in night time, there is no solar. Okay. So what do you do for the power during the night time? So one option is store the solar energy which you generate in the daytime using its battery. Okay. And then use that to use it in the night time. Okay. So you need a storage type for have night time or 24 hour or cloudy days or rain. So then you need a storage. So if you need a battery, if you don't want to charge the battery too much, that can cause accident. So you need a regulator so that it doesn't overcharge the battery. So that's another component which is needed is a regulator. Okay. The solar cell produces the DC direct current while most of your appliances, your refrigerator, TV, they use alternative current, AC. Okay. So then you, you need to some device which takes the DC power produced by the solar cell and convert into the AC power. So that you can see that besides the solar cell, you also need a regulator, you need a storage device, and you need an inverter. And that makes it more a complete system. Okay. So the, the storage devices, you know, advantage they are backup for night and cloudy days, but they also decrease the efficiency. Okay. And they also don't have 30 year lifetime like solar cells have. Okay. So you lose some efficiency, they take added force, you know, floor space, require maintenance, safety concern, and a cost. So that's an additional thing to consider for solar cell. But the good thing is the price for the battery is coming down. That will make the solar, solar technology even much more attractive because then you can be everybody can be able to afford it and store it and use it 24 hours a day. The controller for the battery, okay, so they like electronic, you know, circuits which are used, okay, and those can be also, but you lose few percent efficiency in that one also. You need inverter to convert to DC to AC and then you can buy these electronic gadgets which can convert from DC to AC. Mm -hmm. So what will be the overall system will look like for the solar? So you have a cell, you have module or panels, you create the electric power, okay? And then you need a regulator so that way it power can go to this, you can store the power, Okay. Or you can go to the use the DC. If you don't need AC or store it, you can directly go to the DC power. Or you can invert the AC and use it for AC appliances. So that just shows you how the power, solar power is utilized. I mentioned to you about the solar cell, you know, but what about in the future? 
while solar cell efficiency will continue to increase, their, their cost will be coming down. But then people are looking at other ways of utilizing solar. Okay. The picture here shows you that these are tiny, tiny mirrors. Let's say in a desert, you put large amount of these mirrors. When the sunlight comes in, these mirrors reflect light and all of them reflect to this white bright area here. So these, these are we call solar thermal. So that's an alternative approach. People are pursuing it and are be also some places being used. You know. And they are looking at how to reduce the cost. So this become also become cost competitive. So the mirrors are used reflecting you heat. Now you got large amount of heat here and use that heat energy to con 